If you find that you are repeating yourself when you are chatting with Copilot, then these two new features will allow you to customize Copilot for a more personalized experience. Today, we will look at how we can use memory and custom instructions effectively, as well as how they differ from the Copilot notebook instructions, as well as your Outlook settings. First off, what is Copilot memory? Let's walk through an example so that you can see this in action. So if we say things like, remember that I'm working on puppy level one, then we will notice that when it responds, we have this new little memory updated appear. So this is memory in action, picking up on context from your conversations. So when we say things like remember or I prefer, then Copilot picks up on those items and it will save them in its memory for future conversations so that you don't have to repeat yourself in the next chat. Now, the key with memory is that when we say things like remember or prefer, there is intent that that is how we want to act when we are working on that type of item. Whereas if we just say, put it into bullet points, then that is sort of a one-off situation. And it's not really an intent to adopt to that type of output for future conversations. It's just a one-time thing. Now let's put this memory to use. So previously, when we would be chatting with Copilot, Copilot would remember and be able to reference the previous conversations within this one chat window. But if you've chatted with Copilot a lot, then you know that it only has a limited number of chats. And at some point you might run out of conversation, in which case you would need to go to a new chat and start a new conversation. And you would have to write a prompt to let Copilot know about what project you're working on, what your preference is for the output, and you'd have to provide Copilot with all of that context. But now with memory, when we start those new conversations, it remembers that type of context so that you can then just carry on the conversation right away. So my pro tip here is to prompt Copilot to ask you five questions to learn more about your preferences and working style. This can then be used as a baseline to familiarize yourself with this feature. As you start using memory, you're going to want to be able to manage those items, which can easily be done by hovering over this memory updated and then going to manage memories. So we'll see here that my responses have been categorized into their own individual pieces that can be deleted individually, or if you want, you can clear out all of these memory items via this delete all memories at the bottom here. And the ability to delete these items individually or deleting all of them at the same time is a key component when we look at differentiating memory and instructions, when we'll get to in just a moment. Now, in addition to the ability to delete these memories, we also have the ability to turn this off. So if you want to pause this feature, or if you just want to generally chat with Copilot and not have it remember that context of your conversation, then that's when you're going to want to toggle this off. I'm going to toggle mine back on. And the final piece of memory is that there's actually two components to memory. So we'll see we're in the Copilot memory area of our settings and we have Copilot memory, but we also have work profile. And this is going to be information that has been added about your role through either your IT department or your HR department. So if you want to learn more about the work profile features, then you can just follow this link here. So we can see how the Copilot memory picks up on the context of our conversations and automatically remembers that for future interactions. But if you want to define somewhat fixed preferences, for example, the tone that you want Copilot to interact with you on, then that is where Copilot instructions come into play. To access instructions, we can toggle out of the memory and then we will see Copilot personalization and then custom instructions. So with the instructions here, we can add details that we want Copilot to know about you and specifically how you would like it to format its responses. So we can include details about our interests, our preferences, our goals, or any specific context 
that could be helpful to deliver the best possible assistance and personalized insights. Now, both memory and instructions sound kind of similar. So let's take a look at how they differ and how we can use them effectively, as well as some real life examples. So here are the key differences between the instructions and the memory. I'm not going to go through all of these, but feel free to pause this tutorial and take a screenshot for your own reference. Now, here are some key takeaways to keep in mind. We're going to look at some examples. So I just want you to remember these as we look at those and how we can structure them in some real life examples. So for the instructions, these are going to set the tone for all of your interactions. And we just want to remember that we're manually editing these instructions. So you're likely not going to be changing them regularly. So we can kind of think of them as like our fixed or our baseline instructions for interacting with Copilot. Whereas with the memory, these add depth and personalization on an evolving basis. Now these are automatically collected by Copilot and stored within the Copilot memory. So these are going to evolve and will likely change based on the task that you are working on. So just also keep in mind that we're able to delete them individually or delete all of the memories all at once. So those are some really key differences here. And here are some practical examples of how you might want to set up your Copilot instructions. For example, if you're a CEO, you may want to define to use a formal tone and summarize with strategic implications. Whereas if you are a sales representative, you might want to keep responses concise and client focused. Then to add our custom instructions, we can head up to the ellipses, go settings, custom instructions, and then paste, and then just be sure to save. Alternatively, if you would prefer to not have custom instructions here, then you can toggle these off and just have a chat with Copilot normally. Now, if you work on a regular task or a project and you want to collaborate with Copilot in a specific way for that item, then what I would recommend doing here is going to notebooks and creating a notebook for that task or project. So for example, at Amy's Animal Shop, we do puppy training sessions. And here I've created a notebook for my client, Buddy. And within that notebook, I can add custom instructions on how I want to interact with Copilot just in this area, as well as grounding Copilot on these specific documents. Whereas if you're just chatting with Copilot, then it's grounded on all of your work data and it's also going to be working off of those generic instructions that you provide for the chat experience. So by using notebooks, we can have more focused conversations with Copilot. If you want to learn more about setting up notebooks and how you can use them effectively, then I will include a link to another video in the description. Moving along to Outlook, there are two important differences when we are collaborating with Copilot within the email setting. Firstly, if we chat within Outlook on the right hand side here, then if we go to the ellipses here and go to settings, we will see that personalization setting for the instructions and memory. So whatever you define within the personalization settings here is going to apply to the Copilot chat on the right hand side. Alternatively, if we go to the settings within Outlook, then go to Copilot, and draft instructions, then here we can define instructions such as the tone, the length, and the greeting so that when Copilot drafts emails for you, they're going to sound more personalized and they're going to sound more like you. So these instructions are one of my seven tips on how you can save hours with an Outlook using Copilot. And if you wanna learn the other tips, then you can check out this video here.